Bob Schieffer sat down with Washington Post Pentagon reporter Greg Jaffe to discuss his new book, The Fourth Star, Four Generals and the Epic Struggle for the Future of the United States Army. Take a look. Greg Jaffe is the Pentagon correspondent for The Washington Post, and his book is The Fourth Star, which tells the story of the modern U.S. Army through the lives of four of our most famous generals, who are? John Abizade, uh, David Petraeus, Pete Corelli, and George Casey. And you go through the lives and careers of these generals to just try to, to give us a portrait of where the Army is today. And I must say this is a timely time to be, be thinking about that because with the strain on the U.S. Army now, it seems to me that, uh, that the President is going to make some, have to make some hard decisions here pretty quick about how much of an Army can we maintain? Is the Army that we have now going to be sufficient for the mission that may be ahead? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and uh, George Casey, who's chief of staff of the Army, Pete Corelli, who's the vice chief, are at the center of that decision um, with regard to the health of the Army. Dave Petraeus right now is on the other end. He's the, the head of U.S. Central Command. He's the guy who's using the force up. So how would you describe the situation in Afghanistan right now? Because obviously that's the one thing that's on the front runner now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, the big thing, I think the big question for the military is whether you can apply some of the lessons from Iraq really hard lessons learned over the course of seven or eight years and whether they apply to Afghanistan, particularly this notion that really took hold in, in Iraq, largely because of General Petraeus, of population-based counterinsurgency, the notion you can protect the people and if you do that, then good things will follow. Um, the question is whether that applies to a place like Af Afghanistan, which the people are a little harder to protect. They're not clustered in big cities, they're spread out in rural areas. It's a much more foreign culture, as foreign as Iraq was. Afghanistan may be an even more foreign culture. It's also a country that, uh, it seems to me, we're trying to create a central government there, and it's been few and far between the central governments that we've had in Afghanistan over the centuries. Well, and one of the lessons that I think General Petraeus picks up and applies to Iraq that now we're going to have to see if it works in Afghanistan is that counterinsurgency is not about firepower, it's about governance and economics and politics and culture. So we succeeded in Iraq largely because we were able to build a government that, while far from perfect, is at least marginally sort of representative. Iraqi see as marginally representative. You're right, I think it's a much bigger challenge to do the same thing in Afghanistan, which doesn't have sort of a culture of central governance. And the other part is, and this hasn't been talked about all that much, but the thought occurs to me, if we do put 40,000 troops into Afghanistan, as uh, General McChrystal, the commander on the ground, now wants to do, can we, in fact, afford that. It t I'm told that it's now $250,000 a troop to keep one troop on the ground in Afghanistan for a year. That means that's what, $10 billion a year to put 40,000 troops in there? You know, and I would say the cost, then the, the long-term cost is t potentially higher than the near-term cost. You know, what happens in Vietnam is the strain on the force there drives your sergeants and captains you know, the guys who lead on the ground out of the service. And it takes a good decade to, uh, for the Army to, uh, to rebound from that. And actually, the interesting part is the four guys we write about, they all join the Army between 1970 and 74. They join the Army at its absolute lowest. So all these four stars who are now running the Army worried about the thing that you just, you just mentioned, you know, the strain on the force. You know, they know what it's like. They know what it's like to be in a broken Army, um, particularly General Casey. Colin Powell said the other day uh, that when we talk about sending more troops to Afghanistan, he said what we should be saying is talking about sending the same troops to Afghanistan. And he's talking about the strain on these soldiers, some of whom have now been deployed three times to Iraq, and you're talking about a fourth deployment. Uh, we're seeing this, uh, the result of this in the numbers of, of these kids with the battle syndrome, post-battle stress and all of that. Mm -hmm. Plus. The other, the other stresses that are on them. Is our army going to be able to uh, survive this? You know, the one thing the army has shown so far that's been surprising is that it's amazingly resilient. Um, and I think you could almost argue that in some cases we get ourselves into trouble in Iraq by worrying a little bit too much um, about the strength of the force. I think General Casey in particular, he's reluctant. The whole time he's in Iraq as the, as the senior commander there, I think he's trying to fight the war, and he's also trying to protect this army that he sort of loves dearly. And the two really, um, the two 
at their heart are kind of contradictions, and I think it hinders his effectiveness. So there's an interesting tension. I mean, I think General Petraeus and General McChrystal, by their nature, have to be greedy. Mm -hmm. They have to ask for everything they need and, and more. Uh, and the folks back here have to worry about, General Casey and General Corelli have to worry about the, the health of this force. What is the thing that surprised you most uh, as you did your research for this book? And uh, what do you think is the, how would you evaluate our army now uh -huh. at this point? Uh -huh. You know, there, there, there are similar answers to both. I think the thing that surprised me most is we have this notion that four-star generals kind of fall from the sky fully formed. How these guys behave in Iraq is very much a byproduct of sort of the unique experiences they have growing up in the Army. Um, uh, their ability to think unconventionally. For General Petraeus and General Corelli, both of them go to civilian graduate school. They spend some time in this little tribe of the Army called the Social Sciences Department, which is this sort of font of new ideas. It's a place where sort of generals produces a lot of generals, it also produces a lot of dissidents. So it's an interesting combination. These guys sort of grow up in there and it allows them to see the fight in Iraq and to a certain extent in Afghanistan differently than their peers. That's one thing that's really surprised me. The other thing in terms of with regard to the state of our army, which is which is similar, is I mean, if you look at the army in 2009, I think this drove a lot of our thinking in the book, it's almost unrecognizable compared with the Army of 2003. How officers see the world and understand warfare has completely changed, largely as a result, I think, of generals like Petraeus and Corelli. You know, war's not about firepower anymore. It's not about tanks and guns. It's about politics, economics, governance, religion. Um, Greg Jaffe, and the name of the book is The Fourth Star, Four Star Generals and the Epic Struggle for the Future of the United States Army. Fascinating. Thank you very much. Greg. Thanks. Thanks very much.